Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this Thor-inspired mallet for my really good friend, Mr. Mountain Man, using just materials I bought from my local home center. Let's go have some fun. Hey everyone, it's Mr. Mountain Man here in beautiful East Tennessee on a balmy beginning to February. And I have here a mallet, a handmade mallet that Brent made from the White Lab Workshop. We're gonna take a look and see how he did it and how he made this today. Take it away, Brent. Thanks, Mr. Mountain Man. I made this entire thing out of red oak 1x4s I'd left over from a previous project. I started by cutting a rough length for the handle on the miter saw. The plan is to cut this board in half, then glue it together for the handle. I'm pretty happy with the grip of the handle from my mallet, so I used it for a reference and made a mark. Then I set it up for a rip cut to get two equal sized pieces. I glued them together using my work table as a clamping surface. For the mallet's head, I had some perfectly sized 1x4 chunks laying around. I picked the smaller one and cut it in half. Once all the pieces are laminated together, this will be what forms the mortise for the handle to fit into. The handle is going to be locked in place with a wedged through tenon, so I wanted to add a little angle to what would be the inside of the mortise. I did this at the miter saw with about a 2 degree cut on either piece. To keep it uniform, I stacked them together and made both cuts at once. Next I grabbed the other piece that would be cut to make the outsides and did some sizing to make sure that the handle would still fit after I cut it in two. To make sure everything aligned nicely, I glued it up in stages. First the middle pieces to one outside piece, then letting it dry before gluing the other outside piece on too. I used this cheap baster I got from the dollar store. It's meant for food, but it works well enough for spreading glue. Plus, my kids find it satisfying to peel the glue off once it dries. While the first stage dries, I got to work cleaning up the handle edges and ripping it down to size.
This left some pretty good burn marks, so I put my new clamp to use and broke out the hand plane my father-in-law gave me. This cleaned things up nicely. Time for stage two. Next, I started to cut the tenon for the handle. This tenon is going to be way longer than my table saw can cut with my tenoning jig, so I decided to do it in two stages as well. The first would be to get it sized appropriately with a clean cut that can show out the top of the mallet. We'll come back later for the second stage. Once the head was dry, I cleaned it up with a miter saw and the table saw. I even had one of my shop buddies swing by for an impromptu visit, so I put her to work as chief cinematographer. Then I used the head as a reference to determine how far down the tenon needs to go yet. I used my crosscut sled on the table saw to nibble away the remainder of the waste. Then I used a chisel to smooth that out. Rinse and repeat. If you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing to the channel and joining us on this woodworking journey. <laughs> to start shaping the head properly, I tipped the blade to 45 degrees. Then I marked where I'd like to put a chamfer along the top and the bottom. For the front and the back, I took a stab at 60 degrees for a more steep chamfer. Because of the direction the blade tips, I couldn't use my fancy tenoning jig. So I pulled out my shop made tenoning jig that slides along the rip fence. I clamped the head to it and cut chamfers on all four corners of the front and the back. The idea to make this mallet in the style of Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, hit me after I already had glued the head together. So it's a bit more narrow than it would be had I actually planned to do it but I think it gets the idea across anyway. After getting the basic chamfers cut, I decided to take a stab at a compound chamfer to ease the corners from the sides to the top and the bottom. So I rigged up a setup to get the head turned to 45 degrees 
while keeping the blade at 60 degrees. It ended up not being perfect, but it added a nice look. All these angled cuts left some odd bevels and pieces hanging, so I cleaned them up with a combination of the table saw, a chisel, and some sandpaper. Then I took the hand plane to it to clean up the burn marks. And the good news about this project is that there is plenty of opportunity for sanding. We all know that everyone loves sanding. Next, it was time to cut the slot for the wedges to go. I marked them first, then drilled holes at the ends to make sure the slots don't split and open up too far. These slots were also going to be too tall for my table saw, so I tried using my pull saw instead. I ended up finishing on the scroll saw because my cut started to stray from the lines. I should have just used the scroll saw from the beginning. And I forgot to get footage of it. Then I set up the router table to put a nice round over on the handle. I used a half inch router bit to give it a more round profile than my mallet has. For this glue up, I knew I was going to need some extra hands. So I found some of the best extra hands in the business. We quickly discovered one problem of having a thin curve slot for the wedges. The first wedge went in easily, but closed up the slot for the second one. So it took some really awkward prying before my shop buddy was able to get the wedge to fit in. Once dry, I cleaned it up to look nice. Time to get to the logo. Mr. Mountain Man didn't have a logo design, so I talked to our mutual buddy Tony to put something together, and he rocked it. I took Tony's design and cut it out on some vinyl on our Cricut Maker.
Then I transferred it to the mallet and traced the outline. I used my wood burning kit to burn the design into the mallet permanently. On the back side of the mallet, I added my logo too. You know, for good measure. A little tongue oil to really make the grain pop and give it some more rich coloring. This thing turned out awesome. The large head really brought some heft to it, and the Thor-inspired design really gives it a cool look. I couldn't be happier with the result, and I was thrilled to be able to give it to my good buddy, Mr. Mountain Man. All right, thanks Brent for showing us how you made this awesome mallet that represents my channel, Mr. Mountain Man, and yours very nicely. This is really cool. Thanks again to everybody at the White Lab Workshop and Brent for making this for me. So everyone, I'm Mr. Mountain Man. If you haven't met me before, I am on YouTube. You can check me out at youtube.com slash Mr. Mountain Man or search for Mr. Mountain Man. If you like to see adventures in East Tennessee, Western North Carolina, where I'm from, all the different seasons of the years, hiking, mountain adventures, and local attractions, dining, and fun things that I do, come follow me. Check out some of my videos on YouTube. Thanks again to the whole White Lab Workshop community. And again, for Brent for making this mallet for me. It was my pleasure making this mallet for you, dude. If you want to check out Mr. Mountain Man's channel, I'll leave a link in the description. He's a great guy and it really shows in his channel. Let us know how we did on this project in the comments below and maybe we even earned a thumbs up. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.